Good morning to the Dogecoin Moon Boys, the Doge the Dogecoin Moon Girls and the They Thems. I say have your pitchforks and tomatoes on standby. Do not throw them just yet, but have your tomatoes and pitchforks on standby. It is October 20th, and Ethereum is still dead in the water. Now, we did make the case for a couple months that we should be forming some type of triple bottom W, the McBlast, if you will. And that the middle of the month would be the reversal point, which it appears it was October 10th. So, so far, so good. However... There are only 10 days left of October, and if Ethereum does not move up to 2800 by the end of the month, I would say October was a failure. Now, we did make the case a week ago. We actually said, you can go back and check. I believe it was last Saturday we said by next Saturday we have to be at 68k or October was a failure. Now, Beautifully enough, we did hit 68k, and we did actually hit it by the following Saturday, so that was a good guess. However, I am on the record for saying that Ethereum will be bullish in October. Now, again, so far we did have the reversal in the middle of the month, but we're still lagging. So, we have 10 days to get up here. Uh, if we don't do it, you have every right to throw your tomatoes and your pitchforks. So I say, have them on standby. <laughs> We're on DEFCON 4. If you look at last year's Ethereum price action, you can see that the reversal point was in the middle of the month again. And we had our first green candle Friday, October 20th. So that is today. Today is October 20th. So... I think only a fool would say the same exact thing has to happen, but I don't think it's that crazy to expect something similar. So again, I would say 10 days. If ETH does not push up to 2800, have your tomatoes ready to go. Because even in 2022, you can see October 21st, we had the big explosion. And then if we go back to October of 2020... Uh, October 9th was the reversal point, and then you can see October 21st, we even had a move higher. So, again, I don't want to sit here telling you it's October 20th, get your moon suits on, but I would say for the third and final time, get your pitchforks ready. I don't think, uh, swing them at me just yet, but get them ready. As far as Dogecoin goes, we did have a very nice move for Dogecoin. However, I still do think it is premature to scream to the moon, but I do think we're going to get the path of this for Dogecoin. I, I have not moved it. We've had it here for about two weeks now, and I would make the argument that by the end of this box, Dogecoin should be around 21, 22 cents. Obviously, if Dogecoin explodes through this red line before December, then that would open the gateway for a much less conservative Dogecoin and uh, potentially $2. I know that's a little bit of a Moonboy estimate. It is. I agree. But I'm going to show you why it's not really impossible. So, excuse me. As we rotate back to Bitcoin for a moment, you can make the argument that the market cycles are shrinking. Now, I do believe personally that this is a very bullish chart. And I think it's something similar to what we sat through last year, where we had a consolidation of 210 days. Right now, we are at 245 days. These are rough estimates. Obviously, these are five-week candles, but very similar estimates and similar timelines as well. This one was March. This one was February. This one was October, and we are now in October. But... The argument that we are, not argument, I think it's just data suggesting, right, that each market cycle is clearly shrinking in gain, all right? Now, the question in the millionaire 
bubble is where is the top for Bitcoin? Now, I will not be able to guess the top for Bitcoin in price. I'm not going to try to. But you can see that they're shrinking, okay? 4 million, 64,000, 12,000, 2,000. So I don't know what this is going to end up being, but I would imagine that it's smaller. Let's just say, let's just say 110,000. Okay, obviously that's a random number I pulled out of thin air, but you can see we went from 12,000 to 2,000. So it looks like you divided by six. Obviously, if you divide 2,000 by six, then it's much smaller than that. It's actually already topped out. So uh, I don't know what the percentage is. So again, 110,000 is just a rough guess. If we look at that, we've made the case time and time again that whenever Bitcoin does go parabolic, you can see it just moves up in one shot, right? In 2020, we went from October to April, and that was basically the whole bull run. It just went straight up. In 2017, we went from November, or I, I want to say like December of 2016-ish, we had one or two little pullbacks, and then we just went straight up. But again, this was obviously much longer than this one, but the move up isn't really that different. It just, it just went vertical. If we think the top is here, even if you think the top is higher, let's just say 120,000. There's really not that much room left. I mean, you can look at this right here from October to March was a 170% gain. If we do the same thing, it's a smaller move. And I don't think it's necessarily going to take 462 days that I, that would actually go against what data suggests but the reason I'm bringing this up is because if we do hit a 120,000 dogecoin could uh so, well not dogecoin sorry bitcoin could be that could be too much maybe it's a little lower maybe it's a little higher let's just use, let's just use 100k for a rough estimate for the dogecoin point that I'm about to make which we've made this before there are a lot of new people joining us the Dogecoin BTC chart is starting to form a potential bottom here. And this is where you'll get your $1, $2, $3 Dogecoin. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. Remember last time I couldn't I couldn't figure the name of the show? It was South Park. The teacher goes, okay. If you take the previous high for Dogecoin BTC, if it went to the same price of about 128 satoshis if you put that at a 100 uh $100,000 dogecoin that would be a 120 dogecoin dollar 20 now we speculate that the last set of market cycles dogecoin had a very large downtrend it came out in 2017 it made a lower high and then another lower high and that was the top of the market cycle and then only in 2020 did you finally break the downtrend. So there's two estimates that we can look at here, in my opinion. One is Dogecoin breaks this trend line, just like this smaller trend line from 2017, right? Not the exact same by any stretch, but slightly similar, which would put us somewhere in the middle here which is your dollar Dogecoin, right? We'll say one Satoshi is up here at 100K Bitcoin is a dollar. So that would be your conservative estimate. Now the Moon Boy estimate, this is the SE from Cleveland estimate, is you have a three year, well, sorry, this is actually a decade long uptrend where you have one touch point from 2014 where it starts, the second one in 2021. And then if we have a third one up here, that would put us at about two to three Satoshis, which would be two to three dollars. Again, that's obviously a very large Moon Boy estimate. But here's the kicker. Everyone is always saying that Dogecoin doesn't have a catalyst this time. Dogecoin doesn't have Elon Musk, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to get political, but Elon Musk is now involved in the political stage. So he'll be talking about Dogecoin and 
We'll see what ends up happening with that. I don't really care, but I'm just throwing it out there that he is still very much shilling Dogecoin. But be open to the possibility that maybe that is true. Let's just let's talk the other side. Maybe Elon Musk isn't going to pump Dogecoin this time. Elon Musk wasn't even around in 2017 as far as Dogecoin Association, and it still went all the way up to here. So it's very possible that the move repeats from 2017 and not 2020, and we just get a retracement on the BTC pair, which would still give us about a dollar for Dogecoin. Okay, I think it's important to be ready for both scenarios, uh, you know, but you can do whatever you want. Obviously, you're responsible for your own actions. None of this is financial advice, but I just want to prepare you for both either 90 cents to a dollar and then obviously anywhere in the middle. Okay, so as far as the end of the year, we've made the case over and over again that Dogecoin really gets its real bull market euphoria when the Bitcoin dominance falls. And as we've said many times, that is why we spent so much time looking at Ethereum. Because Ethereum is the only coin that can actually make the Bitcoin dominance fall. How do I know that or why do I say that? Because if you slap on ETH BTC as the final chart, You'll notice the purple line is directly correlated to the fall of the red and green bars, okay? You see how in 2017, the red and the green bars fall. That's the Bitcoin dominance. You see this purple skyrockets. In 2020, the red lines came in even smaller, just as the purple line grew even smaller. And now you're seeing the opposite, where the purple line is slowly bleeding as the Bitcoin dominance is slowly grinding. So what we're waiting for, in my opinion, which is why I always spend so much time talking about Ethereum, is this move up which will be the final move down for the Bitcoin dominance and then ultimately the explosion for Dogecoin, which that would be the timeline for the Doge BTC to make its decision and ultimately move us to either a dollar or maybe it's a dollar fifty, whatever it ends up being, I don't know, but I would just say the open possibility of 80 to a uh, 90 cents to a dollar, in my opinion, is on the table. And then you have a Moonboy estimate of two dollars or something up uh, higher than that up here. So uh, that is pretty much it. As always, none of this is financial advice.